alongside the undisputed greatest of all time in the wheelchair division, who is now seven-time Arnold Classic champion. Of course, we are talking about the one, the only, Harold King Kong Kelly. Harold, you did it again, and we are making a habit out of these post-show <laughs> conversations. Congratulations, my friend. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it, and I'm um, honored, honored by you interviewing me. No, no, no. The, the honor, the the privilege, the pleasure is all mine. You and I saw each other in the in the hotel lobby a couple of days ago, and that's when you were completely in diet face. And I have to say, you had some more uh, facial hair, some stubble going. Yeah. I was very impressed with that, by the way, as a fa fellow facial hair kind of a guy. <laughs> yeah. You are now clean shaven and completely diced to the socks. Talk to us about not only this win, but again, you felt like coming into this show, you had some unfinished business after last year's second place finish. Yes, sir. Like you said, you know, last year was my first year ever losing to Arnold since they started in 2016. And, um, you know, some reevaluation had to go on. You know, um, looking at myself and understand what I didn't do, the few things that I didn't, different points that I didn't touch, um, knowing that they were very valuable. And knowing that we couldn't make that mistake going into the Olympia, which we didn't, and we corrected them. And so we went to Olympia, cheesing myself further down, trenching it all the way down, then seeing all the muscle, which I like to look better. So we did the exact same thing coming into this one, doing the exact same thing again. What was the game plan for this show in particular? Was it another level of conditioning? Was it some size? What was the exact recipe heading into the show? Uh, well, you know, <laughs> the Olympia was in December. Yeah. This was in March. <laughs> So no muscle building. <laughs> muscle was sacrificed already, so a little more muscle gonna be sacrificed. So <clears throat> understand the reality, bring the condition as hard as possible. Don't worry about the, the size too much because you can't get it. So if you if you bring that conditioning right, your size is gonna be, how can I say? It's gonna be apparent, but also gonna be an illusion to make that size even bigger. You know, we talk about the time gap, and obviously in the post-COVID world that we live in, um, the schedules are a little bit wonky. You go from the Olympia where, again, you're putting at your best um, to now just a mere few weeks later here at the Arnold Classic. What kind of ad adjustment does that call for in terms of your prep, going from the Olympia a few weeks later, turning it around for the Arnold? Actually, you have to come up with it because you don't always do that. So. You have to find that formula. There is not a formula because you don't normally do that. So you can't have a formula of something you've never done. So you have to make the formula and hope that formula works when you get on stage. But the main thing is like, you know, just wrench it back down. You know you're gonna sacrifice some size, but be as hard as you can with what you got left um, to bring it here. I talked to you at the Olympia and you talked about your uh, second place finish at last year's Arnold Classic. And, you know, you said you had a lot going on. You're starting new businesses, new ventures, and that you may have left some stones unturned now that you're a little further in that process, what are some of those fine points you said to yourself, all right, I'm not going to make that mistake twice? Well, the crazy part about it is I'm, in, I'm like mentally engaged in the continuing of my trucking company. So I drove from Texas to Maryland Sunday, Monday through Wednesday. And I drove from Maryland to here Wednesday, seven hours, and I got here and I carved up, and actually we driving again Monday. <laughs> so it's like, you know what? When you got multiple things going on, man, you got to figure out how to make it work the best benefit you, and it worked for me. I have to ask you something because you mentioned truck driving specifically. Uh, <laughs> Milo Sharchev once told a funny line about how uh, Melvin Anthony, when uh, the he was driving, and he was just like, when you're driving that truck. You had those abs sucked all the way back in. Did you keep them in from Texas to Maryland to Columbus? <laughs> I know. They were still sucked in from the Arnold. <laughs> They're still sucked in now. But you know, now you, again, uh, reassert yourself at the top of the, the Arnold ladder and obviously your accomplishments at the Olympia level. I mean, you have cemented yourself as the face of this division. And again, we've discussed this before. With that comes, you know, this platform and, you know, it's truly amazing. I, mean, I was sitting in the crowd and you had such a big audience for this, such an engaged, raucous audience. I mean, they were cheering for everyone. It was such a cool scene. What does that mean for you really as the, the, the face of this sport to see this division come this far? Man, you know, uh, 
I almost say it's a dream come through because I remember when we first started, it was holler anybody in the audience. And literally, even right here today, when we knew that we knew that the, the slap contest was going on across the, uh, the way. You're not partaking in the slap contest, are you? I don't know. But no, not doing that. Um, but it was going on over there, and the, 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 strong, the strong man was going over there. And so it was like 30 minutes before we started, I told the guys, boy, ain't nobody in front of, ain't nobody in the audience. We were looking at the judges. When we came out, the whole audience was filled. And I was like, what just happened? And man, it's, it's amazing how they support us and they, they support this class and how the class grew over the years. And man, that's what we needed, man. And, um, and I just want to add this point too, man. Um, um, I just want to see the, the prize money increase with it. You know, right now the most we our prize money is at six thousand, and you know a lot of the guys like get discouraged. Um, we should be nowhere anywhere close to fifty thousand first place. I'm not saying that I just want the money. It's just that we work hard. We work hard, yeah. We 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 do what every other bodybuilder do, plus being in a wheelchair on top of it. So I think our our effort is definitely worthy of that, and I think that the promoters are the 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 the, the, uh, the guys that um that actually putting up the prize money should consider that and looking towards our direction. Yes, the Miss Olympia, uh, the Arnold class, uh, the additional 100,000 for the bringing it from 2,000 to 300,000 were worthy of it, yes, but could have slid at least 10 or 22 other wheelchair class. <laughs> What's next for you? Obviously, the Olympia not till November. Uh, what is not just, I guess, your game plan bodybuilding wise, but again, you know, with this platform that you have, what do you have planned next as far as everything that it is? We saw you working with uh, the Make-A-Wish Foundation as well. Um, just talk to us about it on and off the stage, what you have planned between now and the Olympia. Um, more speaking. More speaking engagement, different schools. Um, partner up with different uh, foundations, like you just said. Uh, this exposure. Yeah. I'm trying to go to Brazil um, for that. Um, I talked to the guy with Sharu. Um, sure, I told yeah. him I want to be there. I just want to you know, represent this class to the fullest and expose it even more to have more turnout and more guys to come out and be a part of it. And just expose it, letting, us know, letting them know that, you know, there is a class that you can get in and um, grow in. And you won't feel that it's a, a, a charity case. You are doing, you are a true bodybuilder. It's not a charity case, you're a true bodybuilder. And you represented it, and you're seen as a true bodybuilder. Before we go, um, we did this in 2019, we're gonna do it again now. So you received some sweet piece of jewelry. Hal, if you could, uh, Bring it up here to the camera. We gotta get this thing on camera. This is this is this is a thing of beauty. Look at this thing. Let me let me try to get in, zoom in on this thing. And, oh, look at that. Look at that. That is beautiful. That is incredible. <laughs> Good stuff. That is that is seriously that that that's sweet. That is a sweet piece of jewelry, a sweet piece of swag, and very, very well deserved for a well-deserving champion. Harold, again, privilege, honor every time we get a chance to talk to you. Keep continuing doing everything that you do on stage as a champion and off the stage, just continuing to inspire everybody that comes across your path. Yes, sir, we will. Thank right. you for having me, and again, I'm gonna do my best keeping it forward.